Welcome to the Black Poisons. My name is Ramakrishna Raidi. Today we are going to discuss about theophilins, why we need and how to interpret the toxicity by symptoms. Coming to the general points, theophilins are belongs to methylxanthine class. These are widely used in developing countries because it is inexpensive. Have been used for asthma since 1930s. Theophilins are become more useful with availability of rapid flash masses and introduction of slow drug release preparations. However, frequency of side effects and related to low efficacy made this drug reduced use in many countries and beta agonistics and ICS have more bronchodilatory and anti-inflammatory effects than theophilins. However, for severe asthma and COPD patients, this drug become more useful. Coming to the uses, for asthma, COPD and premature apnea, theophilins are useful. The patients who are unable or unwilling to take MDIs and who needs intravenous drug, this is the better choice. And for premature apnea, some clinicians suggest caffeine because caffeine has a smoother apnea control and less side effects than theophilins. Coming to the mechanism of actions, there are several mechanisms of actions are proposed. In these, two are mainly important. One is inhibition of phosphodiesterases, leads to increased CAMP and CGMP levels and causes bronchodilation effect. And the second one is adenosine receptor antagonism. This leads to decreased leukotrienes and estimates levels causes anti-inflammatory effects and other mechanisms are interleukin 10 release, effects on gene transcription and effects on apoptosis and histone deacetylase activation. Coming to the actions, in addition to bronchodilation and anti-inflammatory effects, there is other actions like increased diaphragmatic contractility and increased mucociliary clearance and another effect is important which is acts on central nervous system specially stimulates medullary respiratory center. By this reason, this is useful in premature apnea. Coming to the therapeutic levels in plasma, 10 to 20 microgram per ml need for asthma and COPD, 6 to 13 microgram per ml need for premature apnea. Clinical responses at the concentration of 5 to 15 microgram per ml should be assessed before going for higher concentrations. Many patients who are requiring chronic theophylline therapy will achieve optimal therapeutic responses and low likelihood of adverse effects at the concentration of 8 to 12 microgram per ml. But however, the therapy should be individualized for each patient. Coming to the adverse effects, nausea, vomiting, dyspepsia, insomnia, nervousness and headache are called as caffeine-like side effects. At the concentration between 20 to 30 microgram per ml may lead to various tachycardias including sinus tachycardia. At above 40 microgram per ml may lead to ventricular tachycardias or seizures. Theophylline induced seizures are omniacine as they poorly respond to anti-epileptic therapy and this may lead to post-seizure neurologic sequelae or death. These are reported at as low as at 25 microgram per ml. Finally the conclusion is unfortunately minor side effects do not always occur before severe life-threatening adverse effects are manifested. Clinicians should understand that all patients with toxic theophylline serum concentration in the listed ranges will not exhibit signs or symptoms of theophylline toxicity. Rather, theophylline concentration in the ranges given increases the likelihood that an adverse effects will occur. So always keep your eyes on caffeine like side effects because these are the primary sources for toxicity. And don't ever think every drug causes toxicities like nausea vomiting because theophylline has the unique qualities. And finally, thank you.